When I was nine years old, I had to do a swimming test. It was quite a task that involved seven circuits of a swimming pool, five minutes of treading water wearing clothes, and retrieving an object from very deep water. I was terrified. And it was the first time I experienced what anxiety can do to the stomach. I felt sick for three days before the test, and the day of the test I spent most of it on the toilet. As soon as the test was done, the symptoms stopped. But for some people who have anxiety disorders, they experience gastrointestinal disorders all the time. And the two most common are GERD and IBS. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the symptoms of GERD and IBS, how they may be caused or aggravated by anxiety, and what you can do about it. Let's start with GERD. So GERD stands for gastroesophageal reflux disease. And it means that stomach acid repeatedly flows back into the tube connecting your mouth and stomach, which is called the esophagus. This can lead to heartburn, bloating and belching, a taste of acid in the mouth and even feeling sick. GERD is not always caused by anxiety. Being overweight, poor lifestyle, alcohol and certain foods can commonly trigger GERD. But lots of studies are now showing that there is often a link with anxiety. And there is even some understanding of how anxiety can cause GERD. The esophageal sphincter is like a valve that should close tight to keep stomach acid in the stomach. But the release of a stress hormone called cortisol may lower the pressure of the esophageal sphincter, making it harder to close properly. Cortisol may also increase the secretion of gastric acid, and high levels of cortisol have also been found in IBS patients. The symptoms of IBS are similar to GERD, with bloating and belching, but also stomach cramps, diarrhea or constipation, or both. Cortisol is thought to affect the speed with which digested food goes through the large bowel. If it goes faster, you get diarrhea, and if it goes slower, constipation. And this can affect the balance of good and bad bacteria in your gut. It may also cause low-level inflammation and affect how the gut communicates with the brain. This can cause normal digestion processes to be felt as pain. You know those cramps you feel? Well, that is the muscles in your bowel just moving digested food along. It's a completely normal process. But due to the messed up signaling system, every squeeze of these muscles can feel like agony. And the problem is that people with anxiety are frequently releasing cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone that helps you deal with danger. But with anxiety, there is no real danger, just a perception of danger. Unfortunately, that perception is enough to keep triggering a release of cortisol. And for people with GERD or IBS and anxiety, here is a double whammy. The awful symptoms that these conditions bring can make you worry that you have a serious illness. You feel like your life is in danger. So what happens? Yes, you guessed it, your body releases more cortisol. To reach a diagnosis of IBS or GERD, you may also have to go through some very scary investigative procedures involving cameras on long cables. These procedures rule out more serious causes of the symptoms like cancer. So waiting for the procedures and the results can make anxiety very high. And if you suffer from health anxiety, even after the cancer has been ruled out, you will probably still get thoughts like, what if the doctors got it wrong? So you get stuck in this loop of anxiety causing stomach symptoms and stomach symptoms causing anxiety. So what can you do? Most of the medications for both GERD and IBS are intended to suppress symptoms. A medication called proton pump inhibitors reduces stomach acid to allow the esophagus to heal. But there are side effects, particularly if used long term. Many people do remain on PPIs for years. And if you're still suffering anxiety, then your body is still pumping out cortisol which will continue to aggravate the condition. So it makes sense to treat the anxiety. And that's what they did in this study. They had three groups. One received just a proton pump inhibitor. Another received psychotherapy, which was a CBT, and no medication. And the third group received CBT and a proton pump inhibitor. The study concluded Patients given psychotherapy combined with drug therapy and those given psychological treatment alone showed significantly more pronounced decreases in Hamilton Depression Anxiety Scale and RDQ scores after 4, 8 and 12 weeks of treatment than patients who received drug treatment alone. 
psychotherapy and drugs in combination showed the best overall curative effect. RDQ was a questionnaire about GERD symptoms. So CBT reduced anxiety, depression and GERD symptoms. And it seems CBT can help IBS also. This study found that 72% of patients in a self-administered CBT group reported adequate relief of IBS symptoms, compared to only 7.4% in a control group. But more recently, there's been research into a less conventional therapy for IBS. It's called gut-directed hypnotherapy. This meta-analysis of four studies revealed that hypnotherapy significantly improved abdominal pain, at least at short-term follow-up. Hypnotherapy also provided benefit for overall gastrointestinal symptoms. Because I have IBS myself, I see a lot of adverts for gut-directed hypnotherapy, and it's often quite expensive. I will not be using it myself because my IBS is not anxiety-related, and I've been largely free of symptoms for eight years, as long as I avoid wheat. But I will make a gut-directed hypnosis video for you in the next few weeks, which will be freely available on my channel, so make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell.